Hi and welcome. Today I'm sharing a breakdown of how I made this stylus bed in Blender on Substance Painter. I will show you the modeling and texturing process. I hope you enjoy this video. This video has a full length version available for members only with no speed up and no audio. If you like to watch the entire process in real time, you can join the channel. For this project, I started by modeling the high poly version directly. I looked for references on Pinterest and built my own idea since I didn't start with a concept art this time, using a 175 cm tall cube as a size reference, I began creating the base model. To add support loops and apply subdivision, I used the bevel modifiers in edge weight mode this time. This way I can precisely control where each support goes and have better control overall. While modeling I focus on keeping a good balance between shapes and details. It is important to decide early which parts will have more focus and which can stay simple. This helps the model look clean and stylized without getting too busy. I also try to keep the shapes clear and readable from different angles. During the sculpting phase, we can add more details to the bed, like fabric folds, wood crane, and small details on the metal parts. However, if you want, some of those details can be added in the modeling stage in a simpler way. Since the bottom part of the bed won't be very visible, I won't focus on detailed textures or geometry there, but to avoid having an open invisible space with flip normals, I will add a plane with planks details. Later, I'll bake those details onto a flat plane to keep it looking good. Now I'm working on the low poly version by reducing the polygon count. Since this is a game ready asset using triangles is totally fine, especially for static meshes. I'm also marking sharp edges exactly where I have seams. That helps with shading and gives us clean edge smoothing. I'm deleting faces that won't be visible, but being careful not to remove too much and leave gaps. While optimizing and unwrapping the UVs, make sure to use a checker map. It really helps to spot any stretching or wrong orientation in the UV layout. This way we can make sure the texture will look clean and consistent. To optimize and ungraph the backrest of the bed, it is really important to reduce the geometry as much as possible, since it has lots of curves and rounded edges, keeping everything in quads will give us way too many polygons. We can merge vertices in flat areas, like I'm doing here in the video, and it won't cause any issues. Just make sure the, the surface is flat and mark sharp edges along the borders to keep good shading. This approach isn't ideal for curved or deforming surfaces, it can work but only if you have very good control over your geometry. I packed everything into a single material and gave more textile density to the most visible parts. For example, the bottom of the bed has a lower texture resolution since it won't be seen too much. This way we make better use of the texture space and keep more detail where it actually matters, like on the top and sides of the bed. As usual, I also painted each part of the bed with different vertex colors. This allows me to use the vertex color data as an ID map in Substance Painter, and each color becomes a mask, so I can easily apply different materials or textures to specific parts. If you skip this step, you can still use the polygon fill tool inside Substance Painter, but sometimes it doesn't give you as much control.
For the gold sculpting, I simply use the default crease sharp brush. You can use my free good brush pack, it is linked in the description too. But for this project, I went with just this basic brush. As usual in stylish sculpting, I use a scrape type brush on the edges and corners to give them that worn stylish look. Then I brought the Hello Poly model into Substance Painter to make the high poly sculpt onto it. I used the new Auto Cage feature in Substance Painter, which helps get a much cleaner bake without artifacts. Personally, this new tool has worked really well for me. I separated the pillow and cushion from the bed to avoid casting shadows onto it during the bake. This also helps save texture space since we can manage efficiently as separate elements. As usual, I use my base material, which you can download for free. I simply apply colors to the different parts of the model using the ID map I created earlier. This part is all about creativity. We just need to apply colors in a balanced way so they look good together. Since we are not following a concept part, it can be a bit tricky to decide where each color should go. But as we work through the process, it becomes clearer and we can easily adjust things along the way.
Using color filters on the main material folder at the end is a really useful step. It let us tweak out the overall color and make final adjustment to the texture. We can also try some of the new stylization filters that were recently added to Substance Painter. They can give the texture a nice extra touch. I made a simple design in Photoshop to add on top of the bed cover. This gives it that extra stylish touch and helps avoid leaving it as just a flat color. And that's it. I hope this video was useful. And remember that the full version of this video, no speed up and no audio, is available for members only. You can join by clicking the button next to the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.